We're heading back into the past for this week's bizarre crime that has, over the years, perhaps become more fiction than fact, although it was a very real event that took place. It has been dramatised and retold and embellished so much over the years that no one is quite sure where truth and fiction separate anymore. But the story remains a fascinating one nevertheless, so let's take a look. This is the tale of Yowarashi Okinu, the Edo Poisoner. The story of Yowarashi Okinu is a confusing one, mostly owing to how long ago she lived and how sensationalised her case was even at the time. Born Harada Kinu, Yowarashi was born in 1844, or 1845, and according to which source you want to believe, was either the daughter of a samurai in Awa province, the daughter of a fisherman by the name of Sajiro in Jogashima, Miura Peninsula, or was perhaps born in Edo itself. One of the most popular stories told about her life goes as follows. It was said that her parents died when she was 16, and then her uncle, who lived in Edo, took her in. Due to their lack of money, she became a geisha and took on the name Kamakura Koharu. She was an incredibly beautiful woman, and her beauty became well known all over Edo. Around this time, Okubo Tadayoshi, daimyo of the Karasuyama domain, saw and fell in love with Yowarashi. Kurosawa Gentatsu, a doctor from Nihonbashi from a middle-class family, temporarily assumed guardianship of her, and so Yowarashi became Okubo's concubine. Kurosawa's adoption of her was necessary because she was of a lowly social class and thus unable to marry nobility. She changed her name once again to Hanayo, and in 1857 gave birth to Tadayoshi's heir, Tadayori. You may immediately notice a contradiction here. The story claims that Yowarashi moved to Edo at 16, then met Tadayoshi, then gave birth to their son in 1857. However, Yowarashi was only 13 in 1857, and thus shouldn't even be in Edo by this point, let alone having a child. Either way, three years later, Tadayoshi passed away, and their brief marriage ended. She then changed her name again, to Shingetsuin, and, according to tradition, became a Buddhist nun to pray for her husband's soul. Yet, this was not what she wanted to do with the rest of her life, and because she didn't want to become Buddhist to begin with, she struggled with the lifestyle and fell into a depression. At a friend's recommendation, she moved to Hakone for a change of pace. There, she met Kakutaro, son of a dry goods seller, and the two fell in love. The pair moved back to Edo, and Kakutaro moved in with her. But with Yoarashi being a widow, their love was forbidden. The Okubo family soon learnt of their affair and banished her from the family. After that, Kakutaro received a marriage proposal elsewhere, and Yowarashi was left all alone. As such, she returned to her former geisha lifestyle. Before long, she met Kobayashi Kimpe, a former falconer from an Edo samurai family who had worked for the former shogunate during the Boshin War, and at present worked as a moneylender. Kobayashi fell head over heels with Yowarashi and bought her out of her geisha lifestyle. He set up a house for her in Asakusa, close to the kabuki theatres of Saruwakacho, and whatever she wanted, he got it for her. Yowarashi soon fell in love with a kabuki actor by the name of Arashi Dikaku, however, and wished to leave her new husband behind and marry him instead. As such, she decided to poison Kobayashi with rat poison to get out of their marriage. Her act was discovered and Yowarashi was arrested, tried, and found guilty. She received the death penalty, but was discovered to be pregnant at the time, so her execution was delayed until she gave birth to the child. After the birth of her child with Nikaku, Yowarashi was executed at Kozukuhara prison. 
Her decapitated head was displayed for three days thereafter, and she reportedly received the name Yoarashi posthumously because of the final poem she spoke before death. Yoarashi no samete atonashi hana no yume. Awake during the night storm, without a trace, a flower's dream. Rikaku, meanwhile, received a three year sentence for adultery. This is the story that was commonly spread about Yoarashi's life, but the reality is still shrouded in mystery. She was executed on March 28, 1872, for which there is real evidence. Several years after her death, a book called Yoarashi Okinu, Flower Frail Dreams of Revenge, sensationalized her story and portrayed her as a woman out to get men seducing them with her womanly wiles before using them all up for their worth. Of the little we can be sure of, Yoarashi was indeed a geisha in Edo during the mid to late 1800s. She was known to be incredibly beautiful and many sought her company. It was likely that she became the mistress of Okubo Tadayori, not Tadayoshi, and had a son with him who went on to become the Okubo heir. However, it was Tadayori, still alive and who went on to have many more children, that abandoned her, not his family. It was a bit of a scandal that Yoarashi, Tadayori's concubine, gave birth to his heir instead of his wife and the boy himself was not happy with his real mother. Out of money after being abandoned and tossed into the middle of the Meiji Revolution, she at some point met Kobayashi an elderly moneylender, who she married, and then who set her up in an apartment in Asakusa. He was said to be a violent man, yet provided Yoarashi with financial stability. It was there that she met Rikaku, the beautiful kabuki actor she fell in love with. The two conspired to run off together, and so she poisoned Kobayashi with rat poison, but was soon arrested and found guilty. Her execution was put off until the birth of her child with Nikaku, and then she was killed by the 19-year-old executioner Yamada Asayemon. After his release from prison, Nikaku went on to become the kabuki actor Ichikawa Gonjuro II, who remained a popular actor until his death in 1904. It's unknown exactly how Yoarashi got the name she's most well known by. Most attribute it to the poem she uttered before death, but others dispute this and claim she didn't say anything at all. Either way, it became her popular moniker and how she is still referred to today. What happened to her child with Nikaku is also unknown, but it has been said the child was sent to a carpenter's family to be adopted, presumably raised unaware of who their real parents were. Yoarashi's grave can now be found in Hukugonji Temple in Sumida Ward, Tokyo. Her story has been translated into numerous pieces of media over the years, helping to muddy the line between truth and fiction. With her death taking place over 100 years ago, we'll likely never know the full truth, but her story of seduction, betrayal, and murder will continue to live on for many years to come. But what do you guys think of this one? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.